Hey folks, I've uh, decided to do a little bit of a tutorial on how to get Mega Mech working. I've been uh, I've been trying to get people playing this, <laughs> and I think that like the more people that play this game, the better because it's so good. It's so so good. And the one issue I think that a few people, a couple of my friends, have come up bumped into already is installing the game. It's uh, it's a Java game, right? And you it requires the the JDK Java Development Kit environment for you to for you to use it now for most people this isn't going to be a big problem but if like me you have to use java for work or you know study or anything like this there's a fair chance that you've got um a version of the jdk that this game doesn't support now uh, there's there's like a little bit of a quirk with mega mech i don't know why and um i'm sure the the mega mech developers have got their reasons but it doesn't support any open jdk after 11 okay really important that if you install mega mech you don't install it until you've removed any version of the uh of the java jdk after 11 you've got to remove it completely and that's easier said than done by the way it's not a matter of just kind of running an uninstall program usually so what you want to do first of all before you do anything is open up a powershell or if you just use the command line so, you know, CMD will do it as well. Any one of these, right? And then you want to type in Java dash dash version. You can do that in PowerShell as well. It will work the same. And then it will tell you which, which JDK you've got. Now, if you're, open, if you're using OpenJDK and it's any version after, after 11, Mega Mech is going to do some weird things. It either won't install or more likely, like it did with me, it will run, but then certain things won't work. Like, for example, I couldn't save any games. It wouldn't load. It wouldn't recognize any game saves. So you'd say, you know, you'd work your way through like maybe an hour's worth of gameplay, save the game, come back to it, and it wouldn't open. But it was inexplicable as to why it wouldn't do that. Um, I mean, no disrespect, by the way, to the uh, developers of Mega Mech, because I just think it's such an amazing project. And I'm certain that they've got their reasons for this. Um, usually it's because there's, there's, there's usually some elements of some, of some code that they're using um, that will not work with like later, you know, more experimental versions or later versions. Um, but yeah, I really hope that this is something that they sort out eventually because I think it's a real stumbling block for people getting into Mega Mech. Like I was, I was watching, uh, I was, I was re recommending this game to Daz Tactic on his one of his live streams today when he was doing his chat tactic things and. He, he ran into this problem straight away like he tried to install it straight away and then he, it wouldn't work and um likely because there was some issue with the jdk okay so and uh, my other friend who i was going to play multiplayer with also had the same problem so megamech.org which is the website that you want to go to here um go to installation and it actually gives you the instructions what you need to do now what you want to do is go here to instructions for windows and click on this assuming you're using windows uh, if you're using linux or anything <laughs> you're on your own man like I do use Linux, but not for gaming anymore because I just I did for a bit. Ball ache. <laughs> Linux is really, really good if you're up to no good <laughs> or you're a scientist. Other than that, just keep well away from it. Just use Windows. Um, so see uh, updating to Adoptium. You need to uh, you need to click on this link here. OK, and then follow these instructions very, very carefully. So um just go through here. You've got to uninstall the, the current version of Java. So just to reiterate, this is if you're having problems with Mega Mech, okay? But you really should just go through this, this file anyway. It doesn't take long. So you've got to uninstall Java. And the way you do that is by... You need to get the Java uninstall tool. Okay, so there's a Java uninstall tool by um, by Java. And you just you need to click on this and uh, use it. And then just run the, the software and it will get rid of stuff. Uh, you also... When you reinstall it, I think there can be some problems. So for any of you with a technical background with Java, there might be a bit of an issue with path. So what happens is um, when you uninstall it, if you type in Java to the command line now, you're not going to get anything because it's kind of removed it from path, which is the part of Windows that determines which commands will do which programs in, uh, in, you know, in PowerShell or in you know, the CMD command line. So uh, yeah, just you might find issues with path. So what you want to do is just follow this, follow these instructions. Okay, uh, look, they make it quite clear. We do not support any higher version of Java. This is really important that when you install the JDK, you go to version 11 and you install this. Okay, um, 
So yeah, follow these instructions through, come and read it. And it's not that much of a problem. You just have to follow the instructions on the custom setup for the uh, open, open JDK adoption software. Okay, so you just need to set these two, these two uh, associate.jar and set Java home variable. Um, sorry, uh, set Java home variable and the JavaSoft Oracle registration thing. You need to put these, set those two and then just make sure you install it and just do reboots between each step. Um, if you have any problems, go to the Megamech Discord group and bother them there. <laughs> I'm sure they'll love they'll love me for sending you to them. But they're all really helpful. And uh, if you 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 don't even have to ask any questions. If you just search through their tech help thing, there will be people who've already had this issue. This is how I fixed it, by the way. I went to the I went to the Mega uh, to the Megamech Discord channel and I searched for the problem and uh, i found an answer straight away and the people were talking about it so and the people there are friendly as well they want to get people playing the game because it's really good okay so yeah basically for most people it's going to be fine you're probably not going to have a version of uh, the jdk anyway unless you have done some java programming or something or you some other software's forced you to install it um so you shouldn't have an issue it's just if like me because I, I i had to have multiple different versions of, J of, the, of the jdk and the sdk for when i was at uni and i was i was a java programmer at uni so okay so th <clears throat> that's that excuse me i'm gonna take a drink all this rambling is thirsty work okay next thing you want to do once you've got the uh, java installed and you've installed megamech um i'll show you how to set up a game quickly and yeah let me just remind myself of where I put it on my desktop. Here we go. Tactics. So when you start out, really, you just want to be using kind of the core rules. Um, I think Megamech is, it looks complicated because there's a lot of options because there's a hell of a lot of Battletech tabletop rules to cover. However, I didn't know anything about table, the tabletop Battletech when I started learning Megamech. It's such a great game that you can pretty much pick it up just from playing it. Um, it's really easy to play, but it does look a little intimidating. So for those of you who've not watched any of my series, I'm just going to run through how to set up a really quick game, okay? So just click on Start a Game. Uh, you've got a name and a server password. You don't need to put any of these in. So just like just leave that for the time being. And uh, you just click on Open. Now, bear in mind, it is Java, so it is a little bit slow, even on a fast computer. So... What we've got here is the set. This is the game setup up screen, and you've got three tabs. Uh, ignore team overview for a minute, but you've got select units and select a map. What I'll do first is jump into the maps. Now, by the way, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you use the latest um, Bleeding Edge version, which is 0.49.10. Don't use the old stable version. Use this one. This one's way better. It's got. It's for a start. It's got GUI scaling look. Um, so if, like me, you you play on a 1440 resolution, but you're also kind of blind, this is perfect because it, it basically scales everything up. That The older version, the stable version, doesn't have that. So just for that alone, you want this version, in my opinion. But there's loads of other features it's got too. Um, when you when you first open the game as well, um, when you go to client settings, chances are you're going to have, it's going to be using one of these like eye-bleeding versions like like this like i i can't do this okay <laughs> i'm a bit of a vampire and i like to sit in the dark um or you know like with low lights on and this just burns my eyes it's like <laughs> so um if you want to do like me if you if you prefer a dark setting you prefer dark dark mode vampire mode then you can just like you can just put something like this on okay anyway i'm getting distracted so go to select map here you can drag and drop maps these pre-generated maps I advise you at the at the start just to get used to using the there is a map generator and you can go to uh, generated map settings and you just click uh, and there's a normal and an advanced mode and you can just play with this to your heart's content this will de determine you know how much city tiles are in there fields roads rubble got cliffs um, elevation types features water all this kind of stuff you can play with that to your heart's content you can change the theme um, and then yeah it will it will actually generate a map and then when you've actually generated your map you can just preview it here and then you can just actually look at the map that it's created you can also change the game tile set i'm just leaving it on the the, uh, the, the pre-built one because i like this i think this looks good but you know your mileage may vary however um battletech is traditionally played on these hex maps unless you're playing alpha strike or you know with you know like a traditional wargaming table but for the most part it's played on hex maps and um the game comes with 
loads of them, loads and loads and loads and loads of them, and they can be flipped around. So um, here's the example board, and you can actually you can actually put multiple of these maps together. So uh, the the way that you tend to do it in in a game of armored combat, for example, where you get like some of these maps here, like grassland, desert, whatever. Just drag and drop Desert 2 in there. Now let's say that we, uh, this is a bit too small, like it might be enough for like a couple of mechs each, but if you're playing a lance against a lance, you probably want two. And if, you, like there's a couple of ways to do it. You can put stack them on top of each other height by height, or, you know, if you, you know, say you want to kind of run a gauntlet and you've got to get what from one end to the other. But um, the way that it, it kind of does it both ways in the, in the Battletech rule set. But what I would do is get like Desert 2 and Desert 3, stick them together, they drag one into one and one in the other. You can also right click on each one and then you can kind of rotate, you can add them rotated and it can say, you know, I'll send it to board number one or board number two. The, 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 this system is really intuitive, by the way. It's really, really good. Um, so like, for example, if I wanted to switch this one around, I could add this one as uh, rotated in board two. You'll see that it's actually rotated it now. Now we can go and preview this game map again. So you can see here, actually added this map in and uh, you, you could just you can just build these to your heart's content there are loads and loads of options you can also change the board size there's loads of different sizes these are these 16 by 17 hex maps are the standard that you come that come with the you know the a game of armored combat and you know some of the other battle tech manuals i think and the map packs but there are loads and loads of different types so you know if you're if you need things to be kind of even get 25 by 25 and there's people have made a bunch of these look so just go to uh, one we're going to set this i don't know like this one here we just drag it over then you can go to preview game map and look we've got these wonderful maps with some city you know city stuff in great terrain to fight over these are great like i i do like the map generator by the way the, the, the map generator in this game is amazing there's also a map painter as well where you can just create your own maps and i've been doing that a little bit for some of the, the campaign stuff i've had planned uh, but look at this this is really really great stuff got roads got buildings to jump onto and fight around and burst out of and um you know rivers and lakes to sit in so you can fire off all your weapons without worrying about heat so much it, it's just great stuff anyway so let's just leave it like this for now and um, like i say when you're first starting out i would advise you probably just uh, use the 16 by 16 maps get two of them together like this and then just just bang them together like that throw them together maybe we get this one and we, we rotate that and put it on there we go so we've got the water near the middle that's a nice little map to play again play over okay okay so you got a map so you got a map to fight over the next thing that you want to do is you need to pick some forces um if you're not particularly if you're not particularly used to battle tech or you don't know much about the law like me or you know you, you you're kind of coming into this blind right i would highly recommend the first thing that you do is you just play with one lance and that means four mechs, okay? Um, so you, you basically just, I would pick pick a light, a medium, a heavy, and an assault if you want, you know, that might work. Um, so let's go with the Commando 2D. This is a nice light mech. So we'll pick that and you click, uh, what you do is you just click on select. Let me just show you what I'm doing here. So you can actually select multiple box sets. And these are all the different um, rule sets, basically that you're picking your mechs from. You want to select mech as your unit type in the top. And then you've got the weight class here. Just ignore most of these. Um, just just pick, you know, when you look doing this at the start, I'd ignore all the vehicles, tanks, you know, VTOLs, every, or naval stuff, gun emplacements. It's got everything this game has, but it's complex and the rules for them is quite complex. So I'd advise you to start with one Lancer mechs. Um, you, you could even just start with a couple to start off with. Um, but I, I, I think one lance is good. So let's pick the commando. That's a that's a decent mech for you know kind of combat oriented light mech. Uh, let's go for a Griffin. Yeah, PPC and LRM10. That's the one. So we'll go for a Griffin for the medium mech. Whoops. Let's go back into add combat unit. So we've gone to medium weight class and you can double click on Griffin. That should do it. I think you might have to click select actually. There you go. Look, and you'll see now it's added it into my into my team. Uh, then we, we'll go with heavy, and let's just pick a catapult because that's a very classic mech. And you click on select again, and then, by the way, you can select from multiple different rule sets by shift shift clicking. So if you want all the clan stuff in and the 
uh, you know the later the later more advanced stuff you can just select from all of these i don't really like the clans rule set very much i think it's just a bit un like silly even though it's not it's cool but it's just not my thing I, I like to tend to play in the kind of succession war era that's i think that's my favorite era of battle tech um and then okay let's just get an assault mech so let's just pick an atlas just for the sake of it being an atlas and it being really cool Okay, so when that's done, you just you can just click on this. You can click select and close as well if you want to select one and then just close this this dialog. All the uh, statistics, by the way, for your met for your mechs are here, and this information is going to be taken from, ah, uh, what's it called? It's not Sana. I think there's a there's basically an official website, um, where you can where where basically all the mech statistics for the game are are, are held. So anyway, you want to close this now. So we've got four mechs. Another thing you probably want to do before you start, by the way, is this is your player, okay? And you can add, you, you want to add a, a bot player unless you play multiplayer. So you click on add bot and then um, ignore all this for the time being. Just click on okay. This is just a standard bot. It's actually really good. The AI in this game is really, really good um, for, you know, for a tactics game. It's it's surprisingly competent. It's not going to be as good as a player, but it's, it's pretty, it is fun to play against, especially if you're, you know, if you're like me and you're not amazing at the game, you're just, just getting your head around it princess bot is great uh, it'll give you a good challenge it's way better than the ai in most tactics games i think so um now we've got we're going to be kind of blue and princess is going to be red on team two um now princess what we'll do is i'll, I'll show you what i should have done with mine first off and it's just because i've not got it set right click on the player go to player settings and uh, we, let's have princess coming in from the east so click click here so you've got the if you imagine the map here you can set her to come like in any direction on the map and this is where she's going to be setting up and she's going to be setting up in a, a, a deployment zone of three hexes from that edge and then you can offset it by you know so like if you had an offset of three there'd be a zone right next to the edge of the map where there'd be three where she couldn't set up but then three on from that so like between three hexes and six hexes uh, there would be is that right one, two, three. So between four and seven, actually, there would be uh, a deployment zone. Uh, for the time being, just leave that zero. You don't need an offset. The time when you might want an offset is if, let's say, you've got a town and you want to set the, you want to make the AI set up in the town. You could let let's look at this map for example. Let's just go to one that's got some ruins. Okay, so I'll, I'll describe what I'm talking about here. Let's say that you wanted the AI to set up in specifically in this kind of area, right? You would set it in, you'd set it, the AI to start probably on the east, and then you would set a zone offset of three. Um, so they wouldn't set up in any of these three here. But then you'd have a, a, a deployment zone of four. So that would basically mean it would set up in any of these. And then you, you're kind of getting it set up roughly where you want. Do you, I hope you follow what I'm talking about there, okay? Um, this is just some advanced stuff, but it's kind of interesting to know, especially if you want to kind of, yeah, you want to play a game where you've got like a, a you want to get the AI to defend something, or you want it to set up in a specific area. Okay. Right click on princess, click on player settings again. And now what you want to do for method for rolling pilot skills is I highly recommend that you just go to constant and then just click on this button here. Piloting is equal to gunnery plus one and leave it on skill level regular what this means is and just click on okay what this means is now whenever i generate a, a mech um, it's going to give it gunnery five sorry gunnery four piloting five now that's the standard rule set okay so gunnery is the on two dice when you're shooting something with no other modifiers you need to get fours or more on two dice in order to hit and piloting is the same so you know you know if you've got to make a piloting check you roll 2d6 and um, if you get five or more, then you've passed the piloting check, but there will be modifiers too. And the better your pilots are, the lower this number. So someone with gunnery like one and piloting two would be an elite pilot, for example. Okay, so uh, we'll just, um, for the for Princess, I'm going to show you how to use the the um, the RAT. So you can create a random army. So the rat generator, basically, you can set where you want you know the kind of general mechs that you want right and it will then randomize and uh, give you a bunch of units that it will roll for you and you can pick from them uh, this looks complicated and it's really not okay there, there are ways of doing this right you, let's say that you want this this particular one here um these these are 
force generations for specific periods in the game. I would, if you're just playing this for the first time, I'd ignore this for the time being. This is going to be of use to BattleTech enthusiasts who want to play their games with a very specific set of units from a specific time period. I wouldn't worry about that for the time being. I'd go to the rat generator, put in a year, and if you're new to the game, I'd, I'd recommend something like 30, 20, 25. Late succession era is when, like, you know, all the early stuff is kind of there but some of the newer mechs are coming in but you've not got any of the clan tech which just really confuses things um just leave the uh the, the faction on inner sphere general and then just leave the uh, unit type on mech you want four units you can uh, change the rating now um the rating i can't remember now if a i think generally in battle tech it's weird f is the best and a is the worst but you can change it so that A is the best and F is the worst in the options. Um, I'm just going to check that myself, actually. Let's just get... Let's just go into... I'll, I'll know through the assault mech, so... Let's just roll up some here. Bum, bum, bum. Mech. F. Yeah, okay. So, look, it's, it seems to be getting atlases and stuff. So, yeah, I think F is the best. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, there's uh, there's multiple tools for, for building stuff here, but this is the this is the generator that I tend to use. So what you want to do is I'm just trying to remember how you actually use this. <laughs> it's been a while since I have. Um, yeah. So you set you set your options here. Set the year. Set the inner sphere. Um, and then just leave it on mech. Set the amount of units you want and the and the and the quality the rating, and then you just click on roll here. And what it will do is, it, um, depending on the weight class, if you put mixed, it will give you a mix of a mix of units, and it will just give you, you know, just click on roll here, and it will roll up a bunch of mechs for you. Um, you can set a, a battle value as well. So if you go to BV matching, this is one way to do it. So let's say that look, we've we've made our Ixian Raiders group, uh, which is just some random name I came up with, and the battle value for these guys is kind of high. Now this is because I've got random like pilots with random skills, right? But it's about four thousand five hundred. So let's say you want the uh, princess bot to have one that's kind of similar. Just go to create random army, and let's say we want to say between four five so five thousand four hundred and five thousand five hundred. Okay, then you want four mechs, and we'll just and we'll just leave it at four mechs, and then you can set the year to whatever you know year you like the game to be set in. Again, like I say, I kind of like it in thirty twenty five. That's about right for me. Okay, and then just click on roll, and it will give you. Uh, it will give you every time you roll. It will just give you a bunch of units. So here we've got a dragon. This is kind of a weird, weird model. Here we go. Look, a cataphract. We've got two arches and an annihilator. Because this is quite a high battle value for just for four mechs. So it's basically given us a bunch of um, heavy and assault mechs here. So when you pick the ones you want, anyway, just click on add selected or add all. And it will add them down in here. Now these are the chosen units. And then what you want to do is make sure you've got princess selected or, you know, get the bot selected or you, depending on who you're adding it to. And then you just click on OK. And that will add them to princess's team. OK, so this is going to be, a, by the way, this is going to be tough because um, the reason why I've got such a high battle value is I've got some pilots with some better skills in here, I think. Um, but these, yeah, we've got two archers. This is going to be quite hard to kill. Anyway, that's how you that's how you pick a force randomly. Anyway, I would highly recommend that you use the the BV the battle value matching. The way battle value ma works is interesting. Um, I would recommend that you probably look at Sana for that. So, Sana is the battle tech wiki. Sana.net. It's your best friend. If you don't know what a, a, you know, if you want to have a look at what a catapult does, for example, you just click on catapult, and then you can all the information you need for it is here. Um, the class it's it, how much it costs, the the mass, the tonnage, uh, the weapons that it's got will be down here under armament, its speed, how many heat sinks, uh, any other stuff. You've got the fluff stuff here, which is interesting to read. Then you've got um, a description of its weapons and equipment and what it's good for. And then a list of all the different variants. And the, there'll be loads of variants as well. Like like catapults are popular models, so there's loads of variants, look. So this is this is your best friend if you want to figure out what you're doing like if you've never played battletech before right and you're just lost like because this game has hundreds of mechs maybe even a thousand or more it's, there's hundreds of them um and you're not quite sure what you want to pick go into you know go into sana and you know you can just look at it like okay what is a commando 
like we'll go to we'll go back into the site and go all right type in commando what is a commando 2d well the 2d is the stock model it's got one srm6 short range missile launcher six short range missile launcher four and one medium laser um it's uh, it runs at 97.2 kilometers an hour now how this translates into hexes i can't quite remember <laughs> you'll soon find out when you play all right so um you can also do some other stuff this is this is kind of like you don't need to do this but let's say i want to give myself a better a better pilot and a better gunner i can just change the values in here so let me just show you what i'm doing here i'm right clicking i'm going to configure and then um, the pilot for example you can give this you can just give them a picture if you want to kind of really play with the fluff of it okay so emma emma garnum is now a bloke in which case you'll probably want to change the name so graham radley that'll do you can give them a random call sign you know Trident, whatever it doesn't really matter and then um you know just just give them whatever piloting gunning skills you want and then you click on okay so you can fill out your your pilots and just kind of give you know make them look a bit more cool and if it helps you connect with the game more i highly recommend doing stuff like that i like to do that you particularly will want to do this in a campaign as well because it's really fun to see how you you know what happens to your characters battletech is an rpg as well it's not just a war game it's like an rpg too um Okay, once that's that set up, just double check, right, uh, in your player settings that you are starting in the right position. So, Ixian Raiders, green, um, this is us. We want to start in the west. Click on OK. And Princess, it's starting in the east, okay? So, you can see the, uh, the opposing player is the square red one, and the one that you're selecting currently is the green circle. So, just click on OK. When all that is set up, and you've got, you make sure you've got the right map, then you just click on I'm done. And there you go and here's your initiative phase and you want to read all this you don't have to read it all but it basically tells you what initiative you've got and um, click on done and the game starts then you just want to just organize your windows a little bit like i tend to so you've got your mini map up here and yeah this is not a tutorial on how to play battletech i just wanted to show you how to set up a game and how to kind of get into it because i, I think that that might be one of the you know Maybe one of the barriers to entry the game is quite it looks quite intimidating and complex because it's been you know it's a fan community based game and it's it doesn't have a lot of the modern ui kind of flashy stuff that you might expect with a with a commercially made game um but this is way better than most commercially made tactics games i gotta tell you i mean it's the battle tech system they it was one of those rare games that they kind of got it right the first time around it's it's 20 years old uh, sorry it's from the 80s so what's that 40 years old now getting on and it's still an amazing game and they just keep adding more and more stuff to it so yeah um get in on battletech it is really really good this game is just absolutely magnificent um it's one of my favorite things right now and i think that the mega the mega mech people would probably like more people to be playing it because there's so much effort gone into this game seriously and uh, there's so much fun to be had um I, I might do a tutorial on just basically on just basically how to play I don't really feel qualified to do that because I don't think that I've been playing it long enough to really know all the ins and outs of the UI. Um, there is quite a lot to it, but it's kind of, it's relatively intuitive. But we'll come to that later. All right, folks, I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, just leave me a comment. Um, also, leave me a comment if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it. Um, I will leave a link up to the Discord, the Mega Mech Discord channel. And if you've got any questions on how to install the game or how to set up a game so you can kind of get into it and start learning it, then you're probably better off talking to the experts because they'll probably be happy to help you. And like I said, I found them really, really friendly. All right, guys, I will catch you next time. Take care.